This is an interview with Alexandria, I don't know what her name is, Ocasio-Cortez, with Margaret Hoover on the show, Firing Line, supposedly an interview show. And this is where Ms. Cortez was a little upset because somebody made a video making fun of her. Well, she doesn't like videos making fun of her. So they clipped out segments of this interview and somebody made a Facebook post, I guess. It was just a goofy video, it was not serious. Kind of made fun of her intellect, but I say, why? We don't need to make the evil doctored video. We can just listen to her talk and make fun of her because she's not very bright. All right, here we go. No one knew her name. Alexander no one knew her Cortez, name. The rising star of the progressive left is here to the discuss her ideas. The rising star of the progressive this week left. On Firing Line. Firing Line with Margaret Hoover is made possible by. The Corporate Stevens funding Inc. provided by Stevens Inc. Look out, Bernie Sanders. Alexandria Ocasio oh Cortez God. has arrived. Ocasio Cortez Sanders. made waves two weeks ago. MK Ultra Eyes. Who was chairman of the House Democratic Caucus, winning with 57% of the vote? Ocasio Cortez ran to the left of her opponent, forcing him to join her. We're there. so happy she that she ran out a to the left of, the of her opponent. She wore through the sole of her shoes. Oh, she wore out her shoes. She wore out her shoes campaigning. She wore her out her shoes. Her win was a political earthquake. An she earthquake. I don't know about that. The shit lit won the Bronx. Let's not act like this is Trump. And racial justice. According racial pundits, justice. She has high-speed Wi-Fi and a system still impressed by dialect. A social media influencer who can sell policies a social media and sell out lipstick Holy with shit. a single tweet. There is no denying oh, she is the progressive shit. As much for her ideas. So this as person is supposedly a centrist, or they a pretend that they're centrist. Wrote, Ocasio Cortez is as articulate as she is relatable. Well, we'll see about the articulate uh, level of articulation that we get here from Miss And should she be elected, she'll Cortez. also be the youngest woman ever to serve in the, the youngest United woman States ever Congress. to serve. Alexandra Ocasio Cortez. Alexandria Welcome Ocasio Cortez in your boots. Uh, Can't wear nice shoes. Such a shock, or boots. and it was because you worked hard. That's the first point you always yeah. make: is that you outworked your opponent. Uh, well, <laughs> it was all shoe leather. The term "democratic MK socialist" is a term that a young bunch people of hear very differently than old people. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if you could expound on what that term means to you. Yes, uh, you know, I yes, often say that to me, democratic socialism is the value that in a modern, moral, and wealthy society no person in america should be too poor to live and for me what it really means is no person in america should be too poor to live well doesn't everybody kind of have that value i mean that's nothing new um nothing out of the ordinary i would, I would say not like she's breaking new ground with this stuff establishing a baseline level of economic and social dignity in the United States to say Ridiculous. no matter what happens we're not going to go below this level that all we should aim you for every person this. in this country to be covered by health care to have access uh, to a full college education uh, as well as trade school and to access. Sure everybody has access all the goals that you articulated, I aspire to as well. Yeah, you aspire. So articulate it. So what is it about democratic socialism really that makes it the best vehicle for achieving those ends? I come from a background as an organizer. Oh, imagine and that. in this moment, Just like right Barack. now, this political moment, democratic social, or perhaps even a DSA in particular, is one of the only active organizing groups in the United States that is actively asserting that. You know, I think that so what many people fuck? talk into those values, and it's not so Actively much about feminism, a color, a party. Actively asserting that. The ideology, as much as it is asserting and advancing the basic aspects of human dignity in 2018. The so basic you mentioned DSA, in case our viewers don't know what DSA is, it's Democratic Socialist of America. Communists. What's really interesting is that it has increased Blood participation red. significantly in the last few years. In 2016, well, this there were is only dumb. 
6,500. Who cares? There's none. There's 300. In 2017, over 300 there million people. There's more and by actual July Nazis 2018, there are <laughs> in the United States. The more actual than about communists. The this is nothing. And particularly buoyed by. What is this crap? Young people. So young explain people. in your view what it is about democratic socialism that appeals to millennials. And millennials. Because they well, get free shit. I think that for our generation, we kind of view the world through a very different lens. Uh, yeah, like through in my life, for example, lens. I was born in 1989. And uh, so at that point, okay. I was growing up during the, the Clinton era. Um, and Not then really. when I was in middle school, three. 9-11 happened. So when we when you think about young people, it's important to think about the general timeline, the world that we grew up in. I was about How was that a different you know, lens 17, anyway? 18 years old when the financial crisis oh. hit. We never experienced really a time of true economic prosperity in the United States. You know, um, millennials have never we experienced have economic the prosperity. Concentration of wealth at the very top, tippy top of the one percent, and we've seen the consolidation of corporations start to really erode our wages, really erode. I think young people are very... What? We, we've never seen economic... What the hell? We've never seen economic prosperity as millennials. That doesn't make any sense. Now, I think there's been a downturn at that time, but we've never seen prosperity ever, including now. I mean, we live better than... 19th century kings in the United States. Let's not be fucking ridiculous here. Um, and then the, the other part is just general basic bitch liberal stuff about how the rich are too rich. They're just nonsense. So that, that, that isn't articulating anything. That we see things through a different lens because, because we had an economic downturn for about five, six years or whatever. And that was bad. I'm not gonna, I don't want to downplay that, but to say we've never seen economic prosperity, that's ridiculous. That's complete horseshit. Receptive to a very strong economic message of, uh, of dignity for working class Americans. That was the really rallying cry in your campaign. It was always about working class Americans. You talk about the top versus the bottom. Working the class right. Americans, yeah. nonsense. Yeah. Well, like you're not talking strong. about. You're not talking about working class Americans. They don't talk about working class Americans. They talk about minimum wage workers and illegal immigrants. It's basically, slave labor. People picking berries in a field for five dollars an hour just to stay alive. Which is not, not anything against what they're trying to do, but please, you're not talking about, you're not equating people who work for thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars into the younger end of their career. You're not equa you're not caring about those people. You're caring about minimum wage people. And the government, no, Mitt Romney takes a lot of shit for it, but he was right. Uh, the the government does take care of the very, very lower class in this case. She's very. So right, there's roughly 4% unemployment, 3.9% unemployment. Oh, here we go. Um, do you think that capitalism has failed to deliver for working class Americans or is no longer the best vehicle here for working we go. class Americans? Well, I, I think the numbers that you just talked about is part of the problem, right? Because the numbers when we look is at part the of figures the and we say, oh, unemployment is low, everything is fine, right? Well, unemployment is low because everyone has two jobs. Um, unemployment is low because everyone is working two jobs. That doesn't make sense. Nobody is working so 80, hours, 80 hours a week and it's barely feeding their kids unless they're picking berries for five dollars a pound. Yeah, right now we have this. No holds barred. Nonsense. Wild West Nobody's working that much anyway. That was already debunked. Profit at any cost. Capitalism has not. Profit at any cost. Well, that's why you're in business, is to make profit, you fucking idiot. You're not in business to not make profit. What do you mean at any cost? It doesn't make any sense. You're an illiterate. Always exists in the world, and it will not always exist in the world. When Wait this minute. country started, we were not a capitalist. We did not operate on a capitalist when this, what? You know, the, the benefit... Say that again. Right now, we have this no-holds-barred, wild-west hyper-capitalism. 
How the that fuck can you say that with all the regulation that we have in this country? We have no holds barred capitalism. We're the Dominican Republic out here. We have no holds barred capitalism. On what? Is profit at any cost. Any cost. Capitalism we have no regulation at all, world, ever. There's no FDA. There's no. There's no CEQA. There's no NEPA. There's no regulation of anything ever. The benefit of capitalism is that you engage in voluntary trade, and that. Now here she goes through the grade school definition, and and watch her stumble over this shit. Because it creates value, it is the system that, unlike all the others, has lifted more people out of poverty over the course of human history than any other system. Well, so I think that. Uh, those things that you talk about, that you discuss, are part of the course of human evolution. And so I would hope that the most recent economic system, our current economic, uh, economic system, is one that is most beneficial for everyday people. Um, but what that doesn't make any sense. Is that, first of all, I think that when we talk about um, socialist or democrat, especially democratic. She's trying to say that capitalism is First just all, because it's there, it worked. Of everybody, you vote. It's it's democratic. So if it's something is not a good idea, it doesn't get voted for ideally. Um, and the other thing too Flats. is that. We're starting to the straight see. democracy, yeah. really? So we're going to vote online. Are we going to vote online? Like Zuckerberg says. Any we want a streetlight in this corner. Let's is. vote. Idiot. And so I do think that absolutely capitalism was the most efficient and best economy, perhaps, um, perhaps. At, for the time that it, that it perhaps. was at, perhaps. But, um, but as we evolve, as automation begins to really take out extremely large industries, we need to so say that bean pickers. we're not going to throw those people away. Bean pickers. So in the That's what you're talking about. We can't have illegal immigrants. We need illegal immigrants. We need to. We need to, to create our entire. We need to create our entire economic system to benefit the bean pickers, and the people who pick vegetables for five dollars a bucket. That's what we want to do. That's what we're looking to do. Was the most efficient and best economy, perhaps, um, at for the time that it, that it was at. No doctored video here. But as we evolve, as automation begins to really take out extremely large industries, we need to say that we're not going to throw those people away. We're not throwing away farmers. Do you think it calls for an end to capitalism? Ultimately, we are marching towards progress on this issue. I do think that we are going to see an evolution in our economic system of an unprecedented degree, and it's hard to say what direction that that takes. And I joke that, like you're skeptical, that capitalism is going to continue. This woman is an idiot. You need to get the right answer. Yeah, I think it's um, I think it's I think it's at least a question. I think it's absolutely a question. One of the first guests ever. You didn't say anything. So they just edited that out. That's the best they could do. That's the best they could do for that question. Obviously, this is heavily edited to make her look good, and that's the best they could do. Uh, I think it's a question. Yeah, wrote the other Joe Also, the initial I organizer of the Democratic Socialist Organizing Committee, which preceded the Democratic Socialists of America. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a really fun clip from that show that I'd like to show us, and then we'll comment on the back of it. I don't like capitalism. I think it's much less uh, than. Uh, well, I think it's a mythological system. Uh, and we talk of free enterprise, but we have gigantic uh, concentrated corporations. But I agree that it is exactly. The magnificent accomplishments of American enterprise and capitalism and business, and the kind of dog eat dog misery that we went through that now makes it possible for us to be decent. And I think that when we finally do get a modicum of justice in the society, uh, we should uh, revere uh, those, uh, those dog eat doggers who, who did make it possible. Well, perhaps contempt uh, is too strong a word. To describe your feeling of unhappiness. Uh, I, I was struck by that sense of yours because uh, practically every ethical, moral, and cultural justification of the capitalist system has not been destroyed by capitalism. Some people would find uh, 
I'm done through the knees. I want to watch that. I want to watch Buckley and other guys. The values you and I are trading back and forth. Did you just compare yourself to Buckley? So I am a really firm believer that the next step in our education these two thoughts is opening up uh, colleges and trade schools to be tuition free in the United States. Yeah, that's the next uh, step. Is to about every make hundred more or so years, we garbage institutions. our public education. When we first started in the United States. People, if you were lucky, you got a grade school education. If you were and lucky, we yeah, right. And decided that wasn't enough, and we made universal middle school. And it wasn't until a lot of people don't realize. It wasn't until don't about 1950 this. or 1960 that we truly really? achieved mm, wow. tuition free. I did 1560. Wow, imagine that. What uh, that, that horrible era. You know, 100 years ago, you could go to school um, to ninth grade and learn calculus. <clears throat> now you get high school seniors who can't read. But you want to make everything free, and that's just brilliant, dude. I don't even have to debunk that. Everybody knows that's stupid. In the United States. And you know what? We're now more out another unions. 70 years, and I think that's as our economy evolves, our education Something else happened 70 evolve. years ago, you Our know. publicly available education needs to evolve. So I believe in tuition-free public colleges. And well, tuition. you're a moron if you in believe addition, in tuition. In addition, we have an amazing opportunity moron. to, at the same time, that, that's how these policies work. They have to be interlinked. Ooh, interlinked. A, a, pursuing a program of federal student loan debt forgiveness. There, you're just pandering to college kids. about how illiterate. encumbering student debt is and university we made, student debt we made high schools on worthless. individuals do the who are preventing them from participating well, in the They almost are anyway. And there are some studies, there's one from the Nobody's going to trade school for that anyway. And others that suggest going that to get their actually the master's the degree to people pause, in the economy is garbage. The, the demark of whether one has a college education or not having a college education rather than college debt. I think about it, in 2016 there's one study I read that said the amount that people are spending, the average family is spending on student debt is roughly equivalent to the amount the average family spends on entertainment costs per year. In other words, it's so not always so crippling, much. but That's that the, worst, kind of the more bullshit. crippling factor is whether you have a college education or not, because your earnings are so much higher. I don't believe that either. Yeah, I would, um, you know, I would I mean, yeah, I would if you've got a degree in because the right thing, it'll help, but 80% of, of college degrees are worthless. The rising amount of student debt, and then the fact that wages are largely remaining flat, flat. Yeah. I mean, that real wages are remaining flat. Real in wages. States. Yeah. Some families may cost Because you know, you're not getting degrees in anything that's worthwhile. They are in student loan debt, but you look at inequality, national inequality. Some folks have parents who are able to support them. And one of the largest drivers of wealth inequality in the United States is inherited wealth. So especially, so what, is really your point? what we need to talk about is this question of social mobility. And that's, as a- as They cut that off there. Right, so what, what, what are you talking about? Well, Did they is, is, you know, I'm cut less her? concerned when you have a lot of wealthy people. Do they cut her off there calling for the confiscation of 401ks? That was heavily edited. As long as Talk about doctor you have video. individuals who are at the bottom part of the economic ladder that have access right. to move up to become part of that right. upper echelon. Do you have There's access? One other piece about education that strikes me because it's so biased. Need to be free. It's just going to screw it for everybody. As you talk about education, is that no don't get degrees in garbage or set of opportunities should be determined because of the zip code they were born. Oh, here we go. Um, here we go. You say that a lot, and your parents actually made the it's choice. It's the school's to fault. Mm -hmm. And to move. It's the bad school's fault. It's not the people who go to the schools. Outside the of the district unions. that you were born in, or the zip code you were born in, in order to afford you better parents. educational opportunities. Single mothers. Yeah. To many people in this the country, schools. that would make you the poster the zip child code. for education reform, mm -hmm. um, especially because that this terminology, is so basic the zip code dumb. terminology, is one that I first heard well, by I first um, heard Michelle Lee, who was mm -hmm. the chancellor of the um, mm -hmm. District right. of Columbia's public education school. District of Columbia. a little bit controversial for dump. Most challenging um, schools some in the of the union wages and, mm -hmm. and education um, reform. Where do you stand on K through twelve education reform? Well, I think it should well, be free. Well, I think there's a lot of aspects to K through twelve. I think make everybody pay for it. This is so stupid. Her answer, to though. Reassess. You know, things like have to reassess. Uh, no child mm, left behind think. has left a wake of of lessons for us. We have to strike a balance between <coughs> no not, child left behind. Uh, and this is not a lame. kind of watering down every child to a bubble on a test and a test score. Not um, so watering in, every child down to a bubble on a test. What does that mean? Our educational outcomes. You're bitching about I scores. They spend too much time studying honestly, for scores. Is that what you're trying to say? That we really need to reassess when we they talk spend about economic. Too much time studying for tests. Reducing economic inequality. 
is our basic system of funding schools. The basic idea. Here we go. Idea that the immediate property taxes of a certain zip code funds that local public school. Not so fair. What it does, it creates this mad dash. Um, I not think really. Not really. It's the people who go to the schools. Fund not funding. Schools is one of the basic things that we take for granted. But it could actually be one of the strongest keys in unlocking. Are you kidding? Um, the opportunities of children in the United States. Another area where you've been. So really you just spend more money on it. That'll make it better. Like, That'll make these kids who don't a give a shit. That'll make Before these parents who don't give a shit. Is immigration control immigration? Oh, here we go. Before they get into that, yeah. Make, you know, spend more money on it. That'll that'll make it better. Give the teachers unions more power. Like you can't fire anybody. They basically abuse kids, and you can't fire them. You can't fire them for anything. Just throw more money at. It. Make it for free. This again, this economic illiterate. The D.C. schools, like the inner city schools, are way more expensive than than. Schools in, say, well-to-do, even medium, not particularly rich areas. And the reason for that is people care. It costs less because people are accountable. You know, there is more competition, too, between some, some suburban school districts, I would say. There's competition, and there, there's people who, who, who care about or are involved. There's PTOs and... Things like that. You have nothing in the inner cities. People, you're, you're just like, you're a single mother and you baby daddy from three different, you know, babies from three different kids or three different parents. And you just say, here, it's basically just day school, daycare. 18, you know, 12 years of daycare is all it is. They don't care. This is just a big lie. The parents who don't care about their kids don't do well. It's not necessarily even the teacher's fault who have to go to this. We have to deal with these kids who don't give a shit. It's a very complex issue. It's not just money. And you want to just tear it down to money. Oh, I think it's the funding mechanisms. That's dumb. You won't say what the real issue is. His involvement in his parental involvement. His involvement by the community in schools is not money. Reform and the horrific and Can't you just pandering for votes? of separating children. And oh, here you go. Womp, womp. And one of the things you've called womp, was the abolition womp. of ICE. And as you've talked about it, I've noticed the, the, that you have the said what? what it would Hold afford up. us is an opportunity to... Hold read. up. Mm -hmm. And one of the things you've called for is the abolition of ICE. Ah! As you've talked about it, I've noticed I missed it. that you have said... Are you out of your fucking what mind? ...what it would afford us is an opportunity to really rethink our immigration system. Mm -hmm. And I'll one of the things I've also really appreciated about how you've approached immigration is that you've noticed ICE. that Republicans haven't always been anti-immigration reform. Abolish right. Um, immigration. That's absolutely correct. And, uh, and I, uh, I worked for, in the Bush administration around the time that you were working oh my for God. on comprehensive immigration reform. If she you worked had the opportunity in the Bush to really Do you need to know anything beyond more? Beyond the conversations about I... Do you need to do anything more about the Republican Party? Yeah. So what would be your priorities? I think we have to look at it in the context of greater policies. Oh, what our foreign policy context. is, what our local criminal justice policies are, tend to have a very large impact, impact on who's coming in and who's coming out. We have always legislated from a place of how do we exclude. That's what a border and is, you idiot! Who do we exclude? Yes! And I just think that that's the wrong question. Um, I think what we what we need to do is we look... All right, hold up here. Edit, edit. For example, when we decide to intervene militarily in a place abroad, I think that in that same conversation, we need to say, how many refugees are we willing to accept as a consequence Zero. of involvement? We need to have those conversations right there. In Zero. The time and place. The answer because is zero. Because I think it will force us to recognize the consequences of our decisions. The potential I don't know what she's aiming for here. This actually uh, makes... Talk about, I mean, it's basic, know, but it does... Trade, when we talk make, about it is sort of common abroad. sense. I think that we need to have discussions about um, what that would mean on, on, on our shores and, and what that would mean... Well, obviously, and then the answer is zero. That's it what everybody wants, is zero. It seems to me there is debate on the, on the far left and so the progressive left about whether low-skilled immigrants... I don't know if she's trying to make an anti-war thing. I don't know what she's doing. Yeah, yeah. acceptable. And so I she wonder says it if you have the ability to really start from scratch, would you do it? Would would you 
But Bernie Sanders has even laughed at sort of open border. Yeah. You can ask the question. Program. So then, yeah, I'm Bernie Sanders, but who is a yeah, person that you organized for, yeah, but yeah, who yeah. was vehemently opposed to the 2007 immigration reform bill mm -hmm. that was passing through the Senate. Mm -hmm. um, so which side of the sort of fence do yeah. you fall on? So I think this is a, this is a really good question. When it comes to low-skilled low immigration, yeah, I quote think unquote low the skill, problem right? with taking that approach is the assumption that people coming in are only waste or only have like some kind of parasitic relationship with like. the U.S. economy. And that's not true. It is Every true. Every single person is a source of economic activity. Not I as such. And what we see Let's is that dumb. immigrants are one of the most entrepreneurial populations in the United States. Every person is a source of economic activity. That's retarded. You have to pay more than you get from it. That's pretty simple. That's not a source of economic activity. That is a net drain. Everybody knows it. You, I mean, my district alone is 50% immigrant. You will not find more illegal immigrants. In no, than you no will don't find do this conflation here. again. And so this idea that something we're is talking about illegal immigrants. That it's going to be a weight, I think is is, it is going to be a weight. False it's not false. It's completely true, and you know it. But do you think that when people say low skill, though, they think it's a weight on the economy? Because I think of it as sort of the robust driver of the economy. And yeah, you're, it's a robust I, driver. I would, Obviously, you worked in the Bush administration. Your, uh, I've learned this bullshit. But I think. We must drive Especially the economy now, work for with this kind of administration, the narrative is the amount of jobs in America economic are activity. finite, and that it's zero Nobody sum, says that. and someone that's low skill is going to take my job, which is Nobody says that. False. You have not, another not cut, really another complete so edit. So that is, that's the best you could do, that edit there. What did you say? You didn't say anything. You just said very basic platitudes that aren't even real, that people don't even really make these arguments mm -hmm. because um, you were seating a democratic incumbent uh, but now you are very likely going to be oh here we go this is where it gets good going to watch this is where she starts talking um, about um, build out some of those foreign policy positions uh, <laughs> in, in the campaign, here. made it's one kind of odd question or made one Did you get in trouble for a tweet that here referred to or the chosen um, ones a, a killing by Israeli soldiers of civilians in Gaza mm -hmm. And uh oh, here we go. Sweating. A little bit controversial. Mm -hmm. But I haven't seen controversial. any of What is your position on Israel? Oh, well, I believe absolutely in Israel's right to exist. Oh, there we go. I we got that part right. I am not a two state solution. Oh, um, and for me, it's hmm. not. Problematic. It's, this is not a referendum, I think, on. Problematic there. The state of Israel. For me, Make the sure lens in which right. I saw this incident as an activist, as an organizer. 60 people, Organizer. Were in Missouri. 60 people were killed in the South Bronx. Unarmed. 60 people were killed in, in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico! I at that incident more through, uh, through just... Why are you bringing up Puerto Rico and, and talking about Israel? It would be completely unacceptable if that happened on our shores. But uh, I am, of course, the, the dynamic there, there we in go. terms of geopolitics of and the war in Italy is very different from people expressing their First Amendment right to protest. Well, yeah, you're an idiot, that's what she says, basically. Yes, but I also think that what people are starting to see, at least in, in the occupation uh, of, of Palestine, is um, just an, an increasing crisis of humanitarian conditions. And that, to me, is just where I tend to come from on this issue. You use the term the occupation of Palestine. Mm. What oh. did you mean by that? Oh, um, I think it, what this I meant is the video. like the, the settlements that are increasing in, in some of these areas and, and places. Not a doctored video. Where, um, where Palestinians are experiencing uh, difficulty in access to uh, their housing and homes. Do you think you can expand what? on that? Yeah, I mean, I think I'd also just, <laughs> I, I am not the expert on I don't know what the hell I'm talking issue. about here, you know, okay? For me, I'm a firm believer Doctored video. In, uh, in finding a... This a is what the other one was making fun of, your stupid answer and, here. And um, I'm happy to sit down with leaders on both of, this issue, on both of these. For me, I just look at, at things through a human rights lens. And I may not use the right words. <laughs> because you're a stupid <laughs> bartender? You're a, 
Look at this MK Ultra eyes here. I'm very honest. That's very honest in your voice. I'm a It's very honest, and when you uh, you're running for you know, governmental office, and you're an elected member of Congress, you'll have the opportunity to and, talk to people yeah. and then you'll learn. And visit Israel. Oh, and you go and learn about Absolutely. Israel. You and go and learn. That's one of those things that's important. You'll get your answer that, correct. Um, you know, our greatest ally, the district that I that I represent, fellow white people, never again. You go and learn. Middle Eastern. Politics is not exactly what's at my kitchen table. Every uh, night. It's gonna be. But I, it is gonna be. You get those checks rolling in. Important issue uh, for people in my district. How is it an important issue for people in your district? district? For Americans across the country. And Why? I think it's at least important to communicate that I'm willing to listen and that I'm willing to learn and evolve on this issue. Like I think you go learn. Oh, you go learn. Aggressive, how do you reflect on President Obama's legacy? Furious style. Here know, we go. It's uh, I think it's Saint I Iraq. Think for me, I just look at. I try to look through President Obama's legacy through as clear eyes as, as I possibly can. You what know, does I that think mean? It's I certainly phone banked for him in 2008 as a very young college student, and I think we that phone banked for Obama. See, I also uh, bothered to. Have I acknowledge people. that he he came in. And his administration came in at a very difficult time. You know, mm. he came in in the pitch of a financial crisis. So you're just making uh, excuses he that he didn't get anything done. To just, I think, unprecedented oh, obstructionism unprecedented from the Republican Party. Uh, he Horrible came in a time when I, I believe that the Republican Party started putting party over people. Oh, and they that did, has did created that. just a very they don't do that now, do they? I think that he tried. You know, Democrats don't do that now. I think he tried his best. Um, you know, I think that we got undoctored video, folks. Not doctored. A little bit too friend, corporate friendly uh, in terms of, of policies, in terms of how we recovered from the financial crisis. I don't oh. agree with all of our, yeah. our foreign policy and drone strikes. You don't um, agree with but I also all the drone strikes. We did Not make all of progress them. during his presidency. We made progress on killing brown people, but I don't agree with all of them. It's my responsibility. And our generation's responsibility to build on to build on well, the legacy of making luck, excuses for not getting progress. anything done and, and killing brown do people that, by uh, drones. Hopefully, when you get to Washington, the set of skills that it took for you I to have a particular um, set of skills, skills that I will use when I get to the 14th district of New York to identify who your voters could be, to get them registered, and to the polls. It was an extraordinary feat. And it's a set of skills that got you to the point now where you're going to go to Washington. And now you have a whole new set of challenges in terms of integrating the ideas that you've espoused and been elected on question? into a democratic establishment mm -hmm. that is pre-existing. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So have you thought about how you're going to how are you like gonna be do this and stuff? as a spokesperson for a new set of ideas? I actually don't think what that once you want talking win, about? An election, you put down your clipboards and you just head to Washington. And you she's got. Totally that's why she's got a can dance. There are certainly additional skills that you need when you get there. But I'm a firm believer in I'm the fact a that firm believer in looking at and things and organizing never through, ends. And I actually believe that there's a profound and organizing. power, persuasion, and influence that's possible. I'm an organizer. And organize I believe in organizing and seeing things impact, through a lens uh, to really impact what's going and on. Really impacting. Paper. And one of the uh, things that we kind of talked about on our campaign was low in money. And I think that in, they're economic in units is what they are. Everybody is an economic unit, even uh, people, the bean pickers a lot of and the dishwashers. The they're all and economic so for me it's units, not, I, I don't and they're to really what drive the economy. I think that, and if anything, we've been trusted with a much larger one. We've been and trusted my with <laughs> has, has our orders, sir, what our orders, me. MK Ultra. They have <laughs> voted for me to be a very fierce and unapologetic fierce voice in Washington. And I don't think that that necessarily means fierce and unapologetic and millennial I don't think that it means organizer. that you um, fight for the sake of fighting. No, but I no, do no. think it means that you fighting. don't compromise. Fight for the organizer. You don't compromise on the, organi the, values on the organization. And and I, don't I hope to at least compromise your values ever. Clarity in Washington. Clarity. At a time when there seems to be so much discord.
There's so um, much discord. I, sort of I need we clarity on the discord. Firing language, you much we need clarity on the levels. discord. And hope that you'll return to the firing line to discuss the ideas that you continue to do. Firing line. When you get to Washington. Wasn't this Thank a so legitimate show at one right. point? Thanks very much. Thank you. All right. Thought. And there you have it. The undoctored video. Department. Hoover is made the possible. The undoctored video of Octavio Cortez and her organizing and her principled organizing and desire and her uncompromised principles for the low income free shit for everyone and that's what it's all about is free shit and organizing values and quote unquote low income economic units and that's what it is and I'm totally not a moron at all for um but I can't explain anything about Israel, but you gon' learn. And I think that the reason that unemployment is low is because everyone has eight jobs and they work 115 hours a week. And the numbers are wrong. And the tippy top, the tippy top of the 1% are concentrating the wealth. But there's no net, there's no zero sum game. There's not a zero sum game in the jobs. No, no, no. There's economic units economic mobility and the people who can't go to college are the ones or the people who go to college are the ones with parents and we can't have parents we can't have mom and a dad and with wealth that's the inequality of the people that have parents the people that have wealth we need to make things more equal that is the thing the clarity that we seek the clarity from the economic units um, that I see from an organizing perspective that I'm never going to lose my vision of organizing for the economic units. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Brilliant orator, basically William F. Buckley, only female and Latina. So how can you go wrong with this great, great orator, this monumental behemoth of an intellect in the current year. Ocasio-Cortez, uber alles.